Nigerian government accuses the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the just concluded elections, Peter Obi, and his vice, Dati Ahmed, of treason. And also tonight, we discuss the possible selection process of cabinet members of the president elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, ahead of the swearing in ceremony. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. The Nigerian government has accused the major opposition leader of treason weeks after the candidate of the ruling party won a hotly contested presidential election. Government spokesperson Lai Mohammed gave the government's position during engagements with journalists in Washington, D.C. in the United States. Lai Mohammed, who is the information minister of the outing, outgoing government, accused the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, of inciting people to violence over the outcome of the presidential election, saying it is treasonable. Mr. Obi came third in the 25th February presidential election won by Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, of the ruling APC. And Obi, an Atikwa worker who came second, However, challenged the results of the election in court, saying the election and the result collation was flawed. Both men have publicly called on their supporters to refrain from violence while they challenged the result in court. We're being joined live to discuss this by uh, uh, Director General Omoluabi Coalition Group, Tunji Balogun, who will be speaking on behalf of the APC, and Honorable Funke Awolowo, Deputy Chairperson, Lagos State Exco's Labour Party. Um, right now, it's only Honorable Funke Awolowo who is, has been able to join us. So, uh, Funke, welcome to the program. Good evening. Uh, Thank you for having me. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Oh, okay. I'm here also. Um, I'm glad that you were able to join us. We were having problems hearing you earlier. Okay, let me, be okay. let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Balogun. Um, these accusations on the Labour Party and whatever your party is talking about, um, what, how, what is your response to the whole issue? I know that your party has spoken, but what is your take on the whole situation? Thank you for having me. Uh, His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, and uh, his vice, that's it. Performing well in the election, doing the first time, in, coming up for the first time for this part of the election, under a party that has no structure, as we used to say. But having fought for the election, election to people that matters as Nigerians, they believe that the election is not a do or die affair. And I believe His Excellency Peter Obi knows for sure that election is not a do or die affair. Somebody has to be a winner at a point in time. Now that the election is over, the result is there. If anyone that is, that is uh, aggrieved, the point is the person will go to court to find justice as it's supposed to be. They have taken a very good path by going to court to seek for judicial interpretation of either FCT is compulsory, of either two, uh, two third of the states. I thought that the system is important, it's compulsory, and then uh, so coming up with this agitation now, with all this proclamation that can incite crisis, that can incite, that, 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 that cause violence, and already things the environment, things that can bring crisis, that can cause wahala, that can cause a lot of commotion, because already people are aggrieved, a lot of things going on inside. So all what we need to do, act to my own best of uh, to, to, to us as a member of this, is that election is over. We should start the healing process. There are times we do. So for Mr. Mr. Peter will be to say the contest election. If only he can maintain his uh, uh, he, can, he can maintain the, the tempo that he has already started with this time around. So there is no point fueling crisis. There is no point for obedience or some people sitting somewhere else and causing crisis or you know, people have not seen it before. What, I don't what exactly I mean, what exactly, Mr Mr. Balogun, is that statement that is likely to cause crisis? What did he say yes. that is not true but will just uh, cause crisis in the polity? What do you? What is he being accused of? Yes, you know he's been accused of 
inciting people. By the time you are saying that, by the, so for example, now, by the time the uh, Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos, my neighbor Rob says, if Lagos cast fire this night, don't say it is, no, if Lagos cast fire this night, don't say it is so, so, because the election has been rigged. Leave that bad people aside. Now, uh, Obidati, uh, that, that he himself, Mr. Dati himself said that even on a live television program, he said the, there will be serious problem and they will swear in uh, the winner of the, the, of the election, which is president, which is president elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And again, this leaked video, this leaked video of uh, Mr. Peter Obi with uh, the conversation he had with uh, Bishop Ludeku. You can, if, if, you, if, you, if you listen carefully to that one, you can see Peter Obi saying it is more of a religious war. This is a religious war, Daddy. This is a religious war, Daddy. As if the election is war. You understand? All those things that, yeah, when you now say the uh, uh, first of Kayamo's reaction, you know, Kayamo reacted in that way, in line with that video, saying that Obi is toiling the part of the religious, trying to incite people against the religious. That, that is the point. Okay, well, Funke will be responding to this, but let me just stay with you a little while longer. First of all, okay. that, that audio that you're talking about, uh, that you're calling yes. video, um, must have been done before the election itself. And after the election, to be fair to him, he is not the one who dug it up to come and play so that it will incite violence and all that. So yes. why, why are all these things now attributed to him, that, this is the things that these are the things he's doing after the election that will bring violence and that are labeled treasonable? That means, yes, you are right that you say that conversation has happened before the election, yes, but it has not been leaked. Now we got it now. That means all the tempo, the tempo has been on a very high level before the election. That people have been instigated to that level. Can you imagine? That means already that election that it, 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 it's, like, it's, it's like the last election they had somewhere in Nigeria in 2011, when one of the presidents who happens to be the sitting president now, President Manu Dubari, was saying that it is if they did not pull the election. You know what he was saying at that, that time? I think when he was contesting that CPC. So let's, let's, let's not flash back to that place. And somebody else, Jonathan, said the election is not about war. Uh, his own victory does not, does not, is not demanding for anybody's blood. You understand? But this uh, Peter will be way now. It's like the obedience, our brothers in the southeast, the counties are saying this is uh, this is our tone. This is our tone. It's either we have it or not. Nigeria was born. Uh, this country will be or nothing else. Not all those things, but it's good for Obi. It's excellency Peter Obi to come out and say that no, I will go to court and seek justice. But if it is not my tone, nobody should spit any blood. Nigeria belongs to us. We have no other place to run to. I said this is our country, Nigeria. He's supposed to come out and make that statement. And that without tension. We will not be saying Chesno uh, Felony. Nobody will be accusing But keeping silent and talking and inciting and uniting people. And we are getting more secret like that. Uh, oh, come, think of it now. We are all Nigerians. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me let uh, Funke uh, Awolo to respond to this. Deputy Chairperson, Lagos State Exco Labor Party. Uh, well, uh, what is your response to this? Your, uh, your principal, as it is, uh, the presidential candidate of Labour Party, Peter Obi, has been accused of uh, treason. He and the deputy have been accused of treason because of statements that they either made before the election or they're making now after the elections or things that the people who are following uh, them, known uh, in, in Nigeria right now as the obedience, are doing. So what's your response and the response of your party to this? Okay. Um, first of all, Shakespeare said something that I will start with. He said, to be first is nothing, first as in T-H-U-S, but to be safely first. That means that um, when he became king, he realized that he got him through violence, through bloodshed. And as we saw the repercussions, they began to say, you know, really, it was it worth it. And that's what I want to ask if after all has been said and done, you know, they are quoting Jonathan as if, you know, they have done what Jonathan did in the past. When Jonathan saw that the turn of events might turn into bloodshed, he said his ambition must not cost any man his blood. 
That's not for APC to quote because we have numerous people that their lives have been lost in this process because some people cannot accept that they were defeated. What we call in English language sore losers. They have become sore losers. You can see that the presidential election, the first one, you know, that happened, there was a landslide victory, so to speak. But a lot of things were manipulated, and um, we saw that by the second term, they were battle ready. You know, somebody saying, he just said, is it do or die? That's not a quote for Labour Party. As far as I'm concerned, President, um, President can, presidential candidate Peter Obi has been very decent. He has not traded words. He has just followed through his ambition and what he wants to attain. And the same goes to for uh, Alaji Ahmed, you know, Dati Ahmed. They have done their part in a very decent way. Now we are talking about the agroism in Lagos State. You know, thugs have taken over. You know, most of the places where people expected to vote decently were weeded, you know, full of thugs intimidating people some people could not vote some people after voting for a certain party were attacked they all these are glaring and if there's any decency in most of the people especially when you see bloodshed you are talking about youth people who are very young and they are going there to express their votes to express their mandate and most of them you know had to be slapped you know they, they were stabbed and all that. And that is why we're, you know, if Peter Obi is decent, which he is decent, that's why he has reacted, you know, that, you know, this bloodshed is uncalled for. It's uncalled for. And they have to apologize. A lot of people, I know, it's a, you know, first fact that I know that people have died. And he that is speaking, unless he's not in Lagos, he saw that people died. And it's all over, not just in Lagos. Even in the East, you know how it took, the time it took for the IBR governor to be announced. You know, all this violence is uncalled for. If you win, you know, I'm remembering years ago when my grandfather had to go to court. You know, the 12 2 thoughts that um, um, San Akinjide proposed, even though Papa did not agree, but he went to court. So going to court is a decent thing. And over the years, like you can see the aftermath, Nigerians have had to regret that move of never allowing the late sage to become president. We don't want to regret. And that's why we are being proactive. We are going to court. And nobody is going to stop us from going to court. Let them stop intimidating Mr. Uh, president Peter Obi, President to be Peter Obi, because there's no court. Why are they bringing up phone calls in the past? And calling, you know, I was reading on Facebook. I was reading on Facebook derogatory comments made on um, Papa Oyedipo. Why? Why would you do that? That office is an office of the clergy, and you've got to respect it. Why bring up, you know, I don't know the relevance of that phone call. I can say it was a personality war. Somebody can say it was a religious war. Somebody can say it's a tribal war. It's their opinion. It should not be, you know, flogged the way it has been flogged. It is uncalled for. And we need to get to a point where we are decent in the polls. Nigerians have been retrogressive. They've taken us back to the 60s. 60s and many of the things they brought out are doctored words. That's not fair. And it's so glaring and visible for all to see. And yet you are saying somebody won. That's not decent. And that's not the legacy I want to leave for my sons or for my you know, children yet unborn. And therefore, we are going to see it through, not violently. You know, I know years ago, that's how they pinned on my granddad, treasonable felony. You know, I'm seeing a repeat, a recycling. And that's wrong. It's so wrong. And you cannot go to the, the Hitler way of propaganda and see that playing in, through the APC. And it's got to stop. We have to be decent in the polls and we have to be righteous in the polls and we have to do right nobody is saying it's do or die nobody can never be do or die because we have children we don't want to see our youth being stabbed 
and killed. There are some gory pictures that I've seen, and I'm wondering, is it because somebody wants to become president? For crying out loud, who does that? It's got to stop, and Nigerians have to go forward. In the 22nd century that we are going into, we have to learn to be decent. Thank you very much. Okay, at least um, at this point, one thing has been established, that none of us wants violence. Whether the APC or the Labour Party, nobody wants violence. While the APC is saying, let's move on, uh, the Labour Party is saying, we will see it through with uh, the most legal means that we can find, the most peaceful means that we can find. So we don't That's want right. violence. But at this point, whether we are going to court or not, we, we are in a, a, a period of healing. And whether we heal while still going to court or not, but we need that healing. So let me start from uh, Mr. Balogun. If you were to uh, proffer solutions to this healing process, you know, give some pointers to what we can do to get this healing, what would you say? Mr. Balogun, please. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. What would you recommend like, for like, us to get Like you have said earlier, yeah. hmm? Going to court is part of the process. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, it's part of the process. I, I for one, and many Nigerians, are not against any aggrieved person going to court. Even if the second person goes to court and the third person now thinks that they will, if the judiciary interprets this for us, if the judiciary interpret this for them, and whoever the judiciary declare as the right, rightful winner, we eventually become the president of Nigeria. Mm. Are you getting the point now? Yeah. Uh, uh, are you getting what I'm trying to say now? Yes, I'm getting mm. that. But you cannot see me because Nepa has just performed their, their blunder. It, it's all right. It's now. all right. Just let us hear <laughs> what you can recommend. You know. Uh -huh. So, as the president elect has rightly said, that this is the time for healing and that it's ready to form a government of national unity. So, we should all forget, we should all just put aside the election. That is the best, that, 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 that's the first thing. We should forget about the election issue. I, I'm not talking about the contestants. Who, I'm talking about Nigerians as a whole. While we move ahead, we, we are waste the judiciary to do their job. Let healing continue. Let peace reign supreme. Let gov uh, let governance continue now so that the campaign is over. So that we, we, let's continue to live in peace and unity, particularly in Lagos. In Lagos, we are the obedient are so hell bent. Where there is agitation for this between the bar and the goals. Where there is likelihood of tension. You understand? And we don't want this to happen like that. You have been living peacefully for years, for God's sake. And this to continue to live. So Peter, I wish you please for God's sake, call all these obedient and evil people to order. And particularly the Igbo, the 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 the, 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 the elders of of this Bulan. The, the statement of Chief Wayahutu is not a matter at all. That I, I, I had meeting with people of, all over, and then we told them we, we, we shall take People should forget about it and then show violence. That's the point. So we should just move ahead. Another four years is there. It will be the youngest of all contestants. <laughs> uh, of all the top contestants, the four. The, 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 the four. So he has a, a, a very good opportunity. He should just keep on building, building this structure, and tell people to forget about all this crisis, uh, forming the uh, ethnic crisis, religion crisis. Just tell them, no, let me pursue my something in the court. I need to be sure to give it to me good. I need to be sure to say, no, I'll wait for my time, and, and Nigeria will move forward. Uh, if he lies, he joins the government of unity, uh, unity government. If he lies, he say no, I'm not interested. There's no big deal in that now. So we should move forward. If all Nigerians should just for for sake of peace, forget about the election. Election is gone already. Now, let us come back to our normal life. Let's live our normal life of peaceful coexistence. Let's fashion way to move out of poverty. Let's fashion way to get out of all this tension. The CBN there is giving us a lot of problems. Eh? But the fellow is there. Crisis of this area uh, is still lingering everywhere. Third crisis is still there. Things, things that we need to tackle. Okay, Mr. Balogun. So Mr. Balogun, about this election, Mr. Balogun mm. just, just shortly, before I go to Funke to wrap up as well. Um,
Okay. Well, can we get some pointers from the president-elect, for instance? Because this, yes. this seems to be like, like a, a battle, well, permit the word a battle, between a president-elect and the person who feels that he should have been the president or he was robbed out of the office because of the way the election or the process was and all that. So can we get any pointers? What, for instance, has the president-elect done that for you shows that he likes unity, he likes peace more than the other. Because some people also from the other camp are complaining that there are a lot of things that were said and have been said in Lagos State, and the president-elect is not saying anything about them, he's not addressing them at all. And if you think there are things he has done that Peter Obi should have copied, or any other person who is making inflammatory statements, let us know these things so that we can also point them to the people who need to throw the line. Yes, if I can get you right, you ask what the president elect has, has said. And done. And done. Yes, yeah, because thank you I remember, much. maybe you'll have to explain that one too, because he said okay. he doesn't. He doesn't care about a government of unity. He wants competence. Yes, some people may understand it in a, in a way, and other people yes. still understand it that he doesn't want national unity. Maybe you'll explain that as well. And you explain some of the things that the loyalists to the APC said in Lagos that Tinubu has been able to address, so that we borrow a leaf from there. The point I uh, can quote from what you've said now is that uh, what, as the president-elect said, if you remember vividly, on the day he was receiving a certificate of return, you understand? After receiving that, the first statement that the president, that the uh, Ashwaj the group said was that uh, uh, either you vote for me or you do not vote for me, either you are basified, you are obedient, or you are articulated. Let us forget about that. That this is time for healing. That already election is gone. That is ready to work. And form a government of national unity. I'm sure you remember that vividly. So having said that now, he has opened his doors. He has opened his heart. So well, everyone, come, let us salvage, let us rescue this nation, this sinking ship. Let's salvage this country together. Let us work together. If you have something that you really supposedly you become president that you want to implement, come with it. Come forth with it. Let's build strong. Let's put round peg in round hole. Let's put square peg in square hole so that everything will go pari so and Nigeria will be greater. He said that actually, and I believe he meant what he said. Of course, you know Lagos State. You know Ashura do antecedent. You know what he has done when he was in Lagos. You know, this, the, I, I, I was able to assemble technocrats. Most of them now, there is, uh, you, 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 can, you, you cannot deny the fact that the vice president was the commissioner in Lagos, the president vice president was the commissioner in Lagos. Minister Tashola was a governor in Lagos. All those, it, you cannot mention the list. It's list, it's list. So now, having the opportunity to be there now, he knows those that's going to assemble for the purpose of moving Nigeria forward. And because he knows that APC, our party, has actually been delivered according to what the party, manifesto of the party says in the past eight years. But there are challenges, of course, you know, a lot of challenges. But now that he's coming on board, we believe. That Ashwaju will do something greater for all of us Nigerians, and Nigeria will be very peaceful if only other agreed leaders can 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 rub up and cancel all this sectionalism, cancel all this ethnic uh, ethnic uh, uh, crisis and things like that. Uh, they all should just focus on Nigeria of our dream, so that we remember that we don't have another place to go. I, for one, now I'm a, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. I'm not a dual citizen of any country. I have green passport. I cannot run to anywhere. But those no people that you are talking about now. They can just speak of something and fly away now. So all of us should come together. That this is the reconciliation period. A time that we should, we should reconcile. This is the time I think the, our brothers in the Southeast will come together, having conferences and colonial, uh, colloquium. That, okay, come on. Nation is going on. What are we going to do now? So can we have the Senate president? Can we have, the, can we have this? What can we do to have this? So we should just be thinking. Let them have a practice. You forget about this nation that is passed already. Let the court, the Supreme Court, finally, and the Supreme Court give us that. Okay, Ashwaj is not the winner. It's number three that win. So be it. Nobody can challenge the Supreme Court. Therefore, okay. no. <laughs> inauguration that the people are protesting. Anti inauguration. What is that for your sake? Eh? So, uh, what are we supposed to be? Because some people are protesting for innovation in another place and in a place where there is government, sitting government. It's not possible. 
All right. So okay. That, okay. That, okay. That, Tunji. Yeah. Tunji, that, thank you. But um, let me go to Funke. I'll come back. We, there are other things we need to talk about. Uh, Funke, uh, we are in the healing process. And I just asked Tunji to say what some of the things uh, he would recommend would be for us to heal. Uh, what will the Labour Party recommend? What would you recommend that we start doing before May 29th? And whatever we do now before May 29th is also going to be what after or beyond May 29th Nigeria will be as well. So what are your recommendations for, for this peace and healing? First of all, yes, thank you. First of all, I find it so patronizing in a sense for somebody to say, having done all the violence, and you know, kill people, maim people, dogs market to say, to let me feel. Now you are saying, let's come together. You know, it's like the way he's saying to the wicked, that you know, come, you know, don't forget the violence, forget that I violated you, forget. And there's no apologies. Let's just you know begin. Let's even get married. I think that's a huge slap in the face. We all want peace. But you see, first of all, we have to establish peace among the certain people that they have bombed their market. I heard that even today, so many markets were locked up for no reason at all. So how do you begin to heal? The healing can only come through equity, through justice, through, you know, attempts by the party that has inflicted all the pain to sue the people. And how do you do that? You submit their mandate to them. You know, you cannot smother us away and say, yes, it is done. Just come and join us. That would be foolishness on our part. And that means that as parents, as leaders, we are not seeking after justice. The Bible says we must seek after justice. We must seek for equity. We must know how to choose the people. And that's not through violence. You know, so the healing is going to be a long-run thing. It's something that, um, yes, we are going to do a lot of reparations to get to the point of healing. You know, I'm not being unnecessarily obstinate, but there is a lot that has been done that I have seen. I'm not, it's not even about hearsay. He said he's a fool in Nigeria, and so am I. I have my green passport and everything. I am a full Nigerian, you know of my parentage and all that. My mother is a pastor, my father is a late chef, so I'm full. But nobody should be able to deprive or deny us justice as a people. And he said the Igbos will be all right. That's very condescending. The, am I Igbo? You know, there are many people, there's a diversity in LP that's most to be respected. And if we say we don't want a certain government, then we don't. He said it while he was talking that Nepal just took the light and all that. Is that good governance? Is that not what APC has done to us? So please, don't insult us. And don't tell us to come and join a government we do not agree with or that has not demonstrated any form of justice. So yes, um, it's a good suggestion to go towards Italy. In fact, I'm a healing minister. Well, I know that before healing, certain things must be, it must be done. When Jesus was healing the people, he had compassion. He was filled, full of love. And so he stopped to heal people. We are not seeing compassion here. We are seeing disrespect of people's persona. We are seeing disrespect of tribes. We are seeing disrespect of people's mandates. How do we start the healing? I'm asking myself. It's going to be a long drawn thing, and it's going to take, first of all, the APC party apologizing to all involved. Then we'll start steps towards reparation. Reparation also means we'll get our votes back, not just um, they will gain our votes. No. So we have to look at equity. We have to look at respect for mankind. Because people, oh God, you should see what I saw. People were stabbed. People were killed. Somebody said he was trying to vote as soon as they, they looked into what he was doing and gave him a dirty slap. Who does that? Please. I love what you're saying about healing, but healing comes out of love. Healing comes out of empathy. Healing comes out of compassion. 
and we have not seen that yet. Thank you. Okay, let's digress a little bit. Um, let me know about the Nigeria of your dreams, what you were hoping to get and what you are still hoping to get as a person. What is the kind of Nigeria that you would want to leave for posterity? Because you mentioned your son and children yet unborn that should be left yeah. a legacy that they should be proud of. What is this yeah. legacy that has been playing out in your mind that you think Nigeria should have, the Nigeria of today should leave for the Nigerians of tomorrow. Okay. So the candidate, you know, when we started the movement and um, it all came out, you know, over the years I've read about him, I've seen what he did in Ananda. So I was hopeful that at this point we are going to get a leader that will respect, you know, the hopes and aspirations of the people. And when we started speaking and going around to learn, to learn, especially when we went to Egypt and so many places, to learn, I saw that this man had a teachable spirit. He's not coming as a tyrant. He's coming because he wants to impact and he wants to put certain things into the system. And so he actually aligned with my Nigerian dream. That's utopia that you wish. Because I've lived, you know, even though I have a Nigerian passport, I've lived in the UK. I've gone to, you know, so many countries. And I've seen even Dubai, you know, I've seen what good government can bring. A government that knows what they're doing, not a clueless government. And as I saw, as we all got together on the drawing board making strategy, I saw that this was a dream that is, you know, achievable for Nigerians. So that it all be aligns with my Nigerian dream. You know, over the years, was it Ojuku that came to my granddad's funeral and said, this is the best president Nigeria never had. You know, and um, some people will say Ojuku was Papa's number one enemy. But he had insight. He knew that this man really meant well and all that. So that's what I'm looking for. I saw in Peter B the Awunawa spirit. And um, that's why I'm backing him. And I know, by God's grace, he will get there. He will get there through equity, through understanding of the legal legalities involved. He will get there because he has insight. He means well. He has not failed his people. And that is my dream, a dream of Nigeria where we have light, where there's water, when children can go to very good schools, Years ago, when I was going to England to school, at some point I went to England to school, we used to send tri transcribe. You know, what you did in the University of Lagos was as good as taking it to any university abroad, even Oxford and Cambridge. That's not the case today, because we are failed on education. That, my dream is for us to get back there and to surpass what we used to know Nigeria to be. My dream is for every child every son of us, to finish school and to get a job, not to have to jack back, as they say. My dream is to go on the road and it will be death traps. Can you imagine the other day, a train and the bus hit each other? And it was because they said later, they were saying, they told the bus driver, don't go, he wanted to run through. People, there are no traffic laws, you know, people just do as they please. And it's because there's no good leader. So that's my dream. My dream is a place where the economics of the nation, the economy of the nation, you know, supply and demand is very good. You know, when they say when supply exceeds demand, there's inequity. No, we don't want that. We want a balanced economy where we are able to have a good local industry, as they demonstrated in Abba and all that, where they make things. You know, it all be kept on saying, I'm taking you from is it um, production where we're able to? Yes. You know, we need to produce, not just to be consuming. We need to be responsible. And that's the dream I will have. And I'm seeing it in Pitaobi. And this is a dream come true. And I just hope, I just hope by the grace of God, the God that I call upon, that we get there. We will get there in Jesus' name. Thank you. Okay, let me go to Tunji as well. Um, beyond party lines, paint us a picture also, just like Funke has done, of a Nigeria you want your name to be associated with 
uh, maybe 10 years to come, 20 years to come, 50 years to come that we have fought for. What is that picture of Nigeria that you see that you hope to get where, even when you have left the stage? Tunji, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, finally. Yes. Please go ahead. And, I said thank you for that question. Yes, please. I listened very well to my sister there, Mrs. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Pastor Funke Aulo. Mm -hmm. You see, as a real of Moluabi, I have a lot of respect for Aulo dynasty. A lot of respect for our family. I was one of the youngest people that used to attend the Yoruba Youth Forum in the Fuyela Hall in Kennedy. When the late, the former old New York Pife was there. So, for Pastor Fuke to speak in this direction, it's not new to me. I quite agree with all what she's saying. Because from here, the bad units from here, Baba, uh, the banjo, and the likes are, we have serious interest for Ashura Jibola Metri. I am saying with that in reservation. We have very serious and passionate, passionate interest for Ashura Jibola Metri. How will somebody like of my sister, my caliber, uh, my sister's caliber, Funke, by Pastor Funke, I will know, be saying that to be as anticipated. What are what our sisters doing? We are not campaigning again. Let's um, leave them. We, we, so I think, I think so we, we have passed that one, Tunji, because. Yes. Yes, we've passed yes, that one. But, right but, now, but I am saying. Like I am mm. saying. Pastor Funke Awolowo has given us a picture of the Nigeria of her dreams. What is your yes, own picture? The, beyond party dream. lines. Beyond party line, yeah, beyond party line. I want a Nigeria where peace, justice, equity will mm -hmm. reign. Mm -hmm. I want a Nigeria where businesses will thrive. Mm -hmm. I want a Nigeria where the youth will be fully employed in a serene environment. I want a Nigeria where security, where we can close our eyes to a close. <laughs> They are sleeping. We are banned to treat in my stored. We are government. And our leaders will be responsible to the push. We are all proud of to carry our group as leaders. Yeah, our leaders will come to class and be leaders. Not a, not a sectional leader, not a religious sense leader. We want a leader we are unity. Unity. And strength will reign supreme. That is just my dream for Nigeria. Okay. Well, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Tunji Balogun, uh, uh, chairperson of the uh, Director General, rather, of Omoluabi Coalition Group. Uh, you yes. have spoken well, and we've also had Honorable Funke Awolo, Deputy Chairperson of the Lagos State uh, Labour Party Exco. Uh, at least we've been able to agree that we want a Nigeria that is a lot better than the one we have today. But we also have to realize that all of us have to put our hands uh, on deck to make sure that happens. Both parties have said that we want a Nigeria of unity, love, prosperity, and equity above all other things. And we hope that we'll get to that El Dorado one day uh, if we have the right attitude towards uh, our country and the way we do things. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Tunji Balogun, for coming on the show, and also Honorable Funke Awolowo for being thank part you. of our show today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And thank you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with uh, um, Tunji Balogun, Director General of Moluabi Coalition Group, um, and also Honorable Funke Awolo, Deputy Chairperson, Lagos State Excos of the Labour Party. And uh, with that, we are wrapping up the show for today. We do hope that you had a wonderful time. Do join us again tomorrow as we bring you another edition of Plus Politics. Until then, my name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Thanks for being there. <laughs>